and separate ourselves and, and <laughs> go into a cave and so that we don't have to deal with thoughts of others or motivations of others that we come in contact with. And, and But that's not true. That's not what he's saying here. It's saying that there is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are the things that defile us. Or make us unclean. You see, it's not that which with the, that's without. It can't defile you. Unless, of course, you let it. But, so it is, so it's a different attitude. We have to look at things differently. We have to examine our lives and say, okay, you know, um, it's not without... That's not what's defiling me. What is defiling me is what is on the inside of me. Jesus said over in uh, Matthew 15, 18, he said, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart. And it's that that's in the heart that defiles you, that makes you unclean in God's sight. It is not someone else. It's not what you put in your mouth. It's not, it's not someone that you're around. It's not something that you eat. It's, not, it's the things that's within that's defiled. No one can make you pick up a gun and shoot somebody. But if you have hatred in your heart, that's what he's saying, it's in your heart, and there was opportunity and you got mad and angry at a person, there was opportunity and maybe you thought that no one, you wouldn't get caught, Maybe you'd pick up a gun and shoot somebody because you're so mad at them. You see the difference? That, that anger is on the inside. No one can make you pick up a gun and shoot no matter what they do. I don't care if they've held you captive. I don't care if you're in <laughs> a combatant, if you're in war. They cannot make you pick up a gun and shoot you somebody. They cannot make you say you're a POW, you're, you're captured and your buddy is captured. And they say, pick up that gun. You take that gun and, and you shoot that person or else we're going to shoot you. They can't make you do that. The only way that it could happen is if you had hatred in your heart. Okay, you talk about fear, but I still don't think that it really, if it comes down to it, you say, okay, well, fear might motivate you. But, but to really to want to kill that other person or your comrade or your, your army buddy, it would have you'd have to have some other kind of motive beyond I think fear for me. You know I mean, so they can't make you pick up a gun. Shoot, nobody can make you pick up. You have to do that on your own. You have to make the choice to do that. And that's what I'm saying. It's not that which with without. It's not others around us that defile us. It is that which is already in our heart. He said those things. Matthew fifteen eighteen which proceed out of the mouth, come forth from the heart. And it's from the heart that we're defiled. Another, in the same chapter in Matthew 15, uh, verse 20, they were concerned because the, his disciples had not washed their hands before they ate. And, he's, and he said, told them, he said, the, these things, these are the things which defile men. It wasn't that that defiled them, not washing their hands that defiled them. It was, he said, these are the things which defile a man. But not to eat with unwashing hands, that doesn't defile you. I mean, you know, you might get bacteria and sick, but it doesn't, it doesn't defile you. You see, we always want to put the blame. It's human nature, I guess. We always want to put the blame on somebody else. They made me do it. Or oh, you could even say, well, you know, the old saying, the devil made me do it. Well, that is not true. He may try to influence, but he has to find something that's already defiling you on the inside. He has to find something on the inside that's already making you foul. <laughs> He has to have something that is, is making you common to the flesh. Another word for defile or foul is to make it common. To make it common. What is it? Well, let's get the definition. What is defile? Here's the definition of defile. is to make common. 
In other words, we're called to be Christians. We're called to walk like Christ. We're called to live like Christ. We're to have, the Philippians says, to have the mind of Christ. Anything other than the mind of Christ, anything other than living like Christ is to be made common. That is to be defiled. I mean, to live like, to think like man thinks, or the, we can say the flesh if it helps you, thinks. That's to be made common, to be made unclean. What was the definition? Uh, definition? Uh, to be made, to make common, to make, it said Levitically, unclean. To render unhallowed. To defile, to profane, dec to, to declare or count unclean. So to make common, to defile, the William says to make foul. You see, anything other than that, you're defiled or will be made unclean. But nothing, no one can make you do that. Even the devil can't do it. He has to find something that's within your nature. He has to find something that's within your heart to latch onto, to help instigate his plan for your life or help you to instigate and make you react. He has to find something that's on the inside. You want some more scriptures on that? G, uh, James says that uh, that we should say that God doesn't tempt any man, but it says that we are tempted when we are when there is something within our own flesh. Amen. I'll quote it to you so I get it right. James. There's James. I passed it. <coughs> James chapter 1, I believe it's chapter 1. But that's basically what the scripture says. I'm not finding it. Oh. Sorry, James chapter 4, wrong chapter, wrong, wrong chapter. It says, from, when, from where, where does comes wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of the, the it says, the lust or the, the desires that war in your members? Ye lust or ye desire and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, but ye have not, because ye ask not. It says, it says in verse 5 of James chapter 4, five, uh, four verse 5, it says, Do you think that the scripture saith in verily that the spirit that dwelleth in us desire or lusteth or desireth to envy? I still didn't get that right. Anyways, but uh, that'll be your homework. Look up that scripture. <laughs> But you see, it says is when you're attempted, it, 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 it's of your own, you see. It has to be something in your own. And so it is uh, Matthew, or uh, Mark, we read that it is, there is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him, but the things that come out of him, those that are they that defile the man. Jesus ate with publicans and, uh, publicans and sinners, it says. Was he defiled? They looked, the religious leader says, that they said, well, you eat, he eats with publicans and sinners. What were they saying? Jesus, you're defiled because you're eating with them folks. You're eating over there with the publicans and sinners, so therefore you're defiled. You're to be made common. You're to be made unclean. Jesus said, not so. That does not make me, undef does not defile me or make me unclean. Now, it can influence you, but it didn't influence the Son of God, and it shouldn't influence us. See, it's that which is from that which is from without doesn't depart. It says there is nothing from that from without a man that defiles. Do you understand? And yet we separate ourselves. The monks separate themselves. <laughs> you know, they all stay in the monastery. Why? Because they're we're concerned that they might get defiled from that which is without. That's extreme. <laughs> 